Self-help, self-improvement, personal development, doesn't matter what you call it. When it comes to being personally effective, there's only one prerequisite that you have to have in order to make progress and growth as an individual. In this episode, I'm gonna tell you exactly what it is. I was having a conversation with a client of mine recently who also happens to be a friend. And he asked me a question, he said, Ryan, how is it that I've been able to make all these improvements, all these changes in my life? How have I been able to do this? What is it? And I said, well, you're a smart guy. Uh, You pay attention. You listen to what I tell you. You remember the things that we talk about. But none of those are the reason why. I said, the reason why you've been able to make all the changes that you've been able to make and why you've made the progress that you've made come down to one simple thing, desire. I said, the reason why you've made the changes you have and you've made the improvement and the growth that you have personally is because you want to. That's it. You have the desire and the want to change and to be better. That is the number one thing that you need to develop yourself as an individual, to grow, to change, to make progress, to make any improvement in your life. The desire, the genuine want to change. Change meaning make things better and different than they already are. The desire to do so. That's what you have, I told him. That's the difference. That's why you've made progress. That's why you've made changes. That's why it's happened for you. Because you genuinely want to. You don't think you should. You don't know you should. You want to. Some people think they should. Maybe it's a good idea. Some people absolutely know they should. Still don't. When you want to change, that's when you'll change. And that's it. Nobody's gonna make self-improvements when they don't want to make self-improvements. And I mean genuinely wanna make the improvements. Not make them because it sounds good, because it looks good, because someone thinks they should. No, when they want to go from A to B, they'll make the changes. But until then, it's not gonna happen. And you see, that's the thing. It doesn't matter how many books you read. It doesn't matter how many seminars you go to, how many podcasts you listen to. It doesn't matter how many coaches you hire. It doesn't matter how much you feed your brain with self-improvement information. The goal of self-help is simply for you to help yourself. But you have to want to do that. Knowledge is not power. Knowledge is potential power. They've been lying to you when they tell you knowledge is power. That's a lie. You can fill your brain with knowledge on how to be better, how to improve, how to grow. You can know all these things intellectually. And I know plenty of people who have fed their mind with all this stuff, this knowledge, this important information that is useful and beneficial. They fill their brains with it, but they do nothing with it. They do nothing with it because to do something with it, they would have to say, hey, what I'm already doing isn't acceptable, isn't good, needs to change. Let me apply these things. They don't because that would be an indictment on who they are. That would have that would cause them to have to look in the mirror and say, man, I really do need to change who I already am. That takes some guts, takes some courage. Not only do I need to change who I already am, I need to be something different that I'm already not. That takes some guts. And most people don't have that. So they think because they read a book or they expose themselves to this information or they go to a seminar or they hear someone talk that's intelligent or that has done it before. They watch a YouTube video of some guru that they can just learn what to do and then it'll happen. That's not how self-improvement works. That's not how self-help works. Self-help works when you wanna change, when you wanna go get the information so that you can apply it to yourself and change the way you already are, what you're already doing for the better. That's the difference. That's what separates most people. That's what separates the many from the few. Desire. You see, knowledge is not power. Knowledge is potential power. Action is power. When you take action and you apply and you implement what you know, what you've learned, and what you understand about what you need to change or tweak about yourself and who you need to and can become, and because you want to become that new person. You have to want to become different and better. That requires you to accept the fact that you are not who or where you want to be. Acceptance is the key. But before you can have acceptance, you gotta have awareness. And you can get awareness from knowledge. You can get the knowledge that and become aware of the fact that you need to change or, or alter something because the way it is isn't working for you. So that knowledge can lead to awareness. But awareness is just an enlightenment. It's just an understanding of something, it's knowledge. That doesn't necessarily translate to change or growth or progress either. From that awareness, you have to transform that awareness 
into acceptance. Many people become aware of things that they don't like. And once they see them and they know them, they turn their back and they don't accept them. Acceptance comes after awareness, but acceptance is where you own it, where you acknowledge it. And you own the responsibility of saying, I accept that this is the way that things are. I'm responsible for changing them and I want to alter or change these things in my life. I accept them for what they are. Good, bad, ugly, meaning I'm not where I need to be. I'm far from where I need to be. Whatever it is, acceptance, not awareness. Like I said, people know they need to change, but why don't they change? Because there's a next level there. So awareness is knowing, but not always accepting. And you can become aware of who you are, what you are, where you are, by learning about these concepts and these, this information and self-help and self-improvement and personal development, that can bring a lot of light, shed a lot of light on your current situation. That can tell you a lot about where you are. You can get some awareness from understanding who you are and how you're behaving, how you're conducting yourself. You can get plenty of awareness as to where you are uh, compared to where you need to be or even want to be. So that awareness alone though, is not gonna do it. Once you get that awareness, you have to accept that fact and you have to live the reality that you are where you are because it's from that reality that you'll be able to design where you want to go and then connect, like I said, A to B. You see, everyone wants change, but nobody wants to change. They want their circumstances to be better. They want their money to be better, their health to be better, their relationships to be better. They want the situations around them to change, but they don't want to change. If you want differences in your life, you're going to have to do or act or be different than you've always been. You have what you have because you've done what you've done. Everybody wants change, but nobody wants to change. That's not how it works. You know when self-help works most? Self-help works with people when they've hit rock bottom. When their circumstances are so bad, they can't deny the reality and they have to accept where they are. Then they go searching for books and information because now they want to transform. And most of the time when they've hit rock bottom, they will transform because now they want to be different and want things to be better than rock bottom. But you don't have to wait till you hit rock bottom to realize there's things or aspects or elements of your life that you can change. You don't have to wait until you're up against the wall. You don't have to wait till you hit rock bottom. Everybody can be better. Everybody can grow. But see, we see uh, asking for help as a weakness when really identifying your weaknesses is a strength. Asking for help, looking for help, searching for answers on how to improve, how to be better, how to develop things about yourself that may be okay right now, but could be better Doing that is a strength. And for some reason, people see it as a weakness. So to try and improve or get better when you think you're already well or healthy or average, maybe seem like you're acknowledging, maybe seems like you're acknowledging something's wrong. Just because you're average doesn't mean something's wrong. But when you're average, you're not great. So if you wanna be great, you've gotta acknowledge that you're average and then go say, how can I go from average to great or great to outstanding? And that help or assistance or development or improvement can come from that information that you seek out once you accept, I'm average, I wanna be great. Or I'm great, I wanna be outstanding. You don't have to be horrible or like I say, hit rock bottom to then say, oh, I wanna improve some things because the way I'm living is terrible, it's not good enough or it's horrible, so how can I improve the situation? We can always improve our situation. But your standards are so low, you've accepted where you are and you don't see how you could improve where you're at. And then you wait until you hit rock bottom to then say, okay, now I need to make some changes. It doesn't have to be that way. You can want to change at any given moment. If you realize there's something better and you genuinely accept where you are, but that desire, that desire and that want to change and be better and grow and get into something else or live in a different way that's more productive or more beneficial or more empowering or serves you better, that is what you have to tap into. And that requires you to you know, check yourself and look in the mirror. You've got to want to do it and you've got to want to do it genuinely for yourself to grow. So please consider this understanding when you think about or talk about self-help, self-improvement, personal development. There's a lot of conversations about personal development. There's a lot of conversations about self-help. There's a lot of criticism. A lot of people are dismissive of it. And I'm going to do another video on a couple of myths and misconceptions that surround self-help just to put some clarity to it. But in the meantime, understand if you want to make changes or you're looking at being better or improving anything in your life, if you're trying to grow or help yourself in any way, shape or form, it has to be genuine. It has to be because you want to do it. And like my client, he has made changes in progress because he has identified what doesn't work. We've talked about what does and he wants those things genuinely. And he's willing to go through and do whatever it takes to make those shifts. You've got to have the same thing. You've got to have the want and you've got to have the genuine desire to change from how things are to how things can be.
That knowledge alone isn't going to do it. Doesn't matter what you read, what book you read, doesn't matter who you talk to, that's not going to do it. It's got to come from within and it's got to be an acceptance that I'm not where I want to be and I want to change some things to get where I want to go. That comes from you and you alone. So keep that in mind and understand that absolutely concrete concept, which is the want and the desire to change who you are and where you are to something better is really the secret to self-help. It's the absolute 100% only prerequisite that you absolutely need in order for whatever work you do to be effective. So keep that in mind, apply this to yourself. If you have any other questions, feel free to always reach out to me. Till the next episode, take care.